this is the first one we have here and whenever I click it you can see that if we come in here to our object tab we've got the start growth and end growth property so I'm going to zoom out really quickly and in fact let's just turn off the visibility for the rest of the sweeps we'll just focus on this first one here so if I'm looking at this one and I come in here to my end growth and I make it smaller you'll see how that larger size that we put on the fillet is relative to how close it is to the beginning so that's why when we first set it up it didn't really look all that huge and then it gets bigger as it gets to the end however if I come in here and I change the start growth you'll see how that size on the end remains the same and it almost appears to be kind of growing see how it gets thicker depending on what way you're scrubbing this thicker or thinner so with that in mind we want to key that property we want to key that idea of this being the thickness we want at one side and the thinness on the other end so it's not going to be you know where we start out like this and it just goes all the way through we want it to feel like it's a piece that's somewhere in the middle of all this maybe it looks like that and then this piece travels all the way throughout that sweep so let's go ahead and set some keyframes with that in mind I am going to start it out where both of these are completely uh, not visible so we want to take both the start growth and end growth property down to zero on our zero frame okay so we'll just control click both of those to set those keyframes and I'm gonna come in here and make sure that's just at 600 for us okay so we're just working with 600 frames here okay so we've got frame 0 at 0 0 now let's move forward to not quite the end but almost the end on frame 500 and let's figure out how long we want this sweep to be so if your sweep is selected our end growth we know will be to 100 percent because it's going to go all the way to the end of the sweep but then if we start to bring up that start growth let's say we want it to get pretty small maybe about 96 so we'll key both of those right there so we've got it completely invisible at the beginning and then completely not quite completely invisible at the end but it gets pretty small and then you can see how that little piece kind of flies around our sweep which is pretty cool but I want to do more I want to kind of add a couple more keys in the middle area of this that are going to make this a little bit longer so I'm gonna come in here to about frame 200 just a little less than halfway and let's take this start rotate start growth down a little bit so it's gonna make it go backwards a little bit further let's take that to somewhere around 14 percent or so and we'll go ahead and key that just by control clicking and then we can make it a little bit longer on the other side too if you want but probably not too much maybe just right around there around 37 or so so now what you're gonna see is it's gonna be completely invisible and it's gonna grow out of that and start to move but then its tail is gonna follow along with it but then you'll start to see it get smaller as it makes it to the end and I don't want it to get smaller quite that quickly so let's go ahead and say right in here around frame 350 we'll come in and uh, edit this a little bit so let's move this up to about 66 for the start growth so I'll key that and then the end growth let's make higher so right in there around 81 82 so it's a little bit longer than it was before but it is starting to get shorter there at the end so you can kind of see how now it has a really painterly effect because we've got that skinny little end tail piece that just follows along with it okay so now that we have that set up let's go ahead and start to add these same values and maybe vary them slightly for the rest of our sweeps so let's turn on sweep 2 
and let's select your sweep two so you've got those same properties available to you. On frame zero, again, we're going to take this all the way down so it's invisible, and we'll control click to key both start and end growth. Okay, and then let's move forward to 500 and we'll do exactly the same thing. We'll come in here and this one will be almost to the end at about a 96 or so. And then this one's going to be all the way to the end at 100. So we've got another kind of tiny little small piece there. So you see how that's going to move through. But again, it's too little. You see how it's like what we had before. So we need to add those intermediate keys. Now what we came up with before for 14% uh, that was pretty good but maybe let's make this one a little bit longer so instead of taking it only down to 14 I'm going to take it all the way down to 8. So we'll key that start growth there on 200 and then let's maybe take this one up a little bit higher than the other one that we did. So instead of 37 we'll do 43 and we'll key there. Then let's go to 350 and then let's just bring this one back a little bit here and bring that tail in just to maybe or maybe back even a little bit that way so I can see it more and we'll key those okay so now we've got this really interesting looking line but we've keyed on the same frames so you see how they're overlapping so what I'm going to do is highlight both of those keys that we put in the middle and we'll just either move it back or you can move it forward you don't want to grab all of them because you still probably want it to end on 0 and 500 but now you can see it's kind of almost like it's playing tag with it it's racing along but it is getting pretty obvious that the size of the circle might be a little bit too big or possibly the radius because we still are getting quite a bit of overlapping. So let's take a look at that. Um, let's see what we've got in those caps. So that radius is at 500. Let's take it down much, much further. Let's try something like just around there, 250 or so. And we'll just do this for all of them. And, you know, some of them might end up being bigger than others. Um, maybe we do 300 here, but 500 is definitely too big. Let's do 250, and let's do 280 on that one. So we've got a little bit of variation in those radiuses. But they're still overlapping a bit, so what we can do is just come in here, and you may need to move your splines apart from each other a little bit more. So let's turn these back on so they're all going to be visible and we're going to come in here just right around frame 50 or so so that's we can see that make sure your head is turned off we don't want to see that part yet and we're just looking at the ends here and they're probably again a little bit too close together so all you have to do instead of moving the whole sweep just grab the spline itself and kind of rotate to where you can see this and we'll just move this one over and down over this way, up a little bit here. This one can go out and up a bit. And then that last one will go down a little bit and over. So hopefully that'll help you from having too many pieces just running right into each other. It looks like we still have a little bit right there, but um, that's probably going to be fixed a little bit once we get some of these pieces working together a little bit better with the sweeps and the keyframes for the sweeps. Okay, so we've keyframed our first and second sweep. Now let's move on to our third. So we'll go ahead and select our third sweep. And again, on frame zero, we've got this at in your objects tab we've got the start and the end growth at zero percent so go ahead and control click to key that and let's move forward this time to let's just go to frame 100 or so and we'll go ahead and push up that end growth to about 22 here we'll key that and we'll pull back on the start growth to about seven there so you can kind of see what that looks like and I'm trying to find exactly which piece it is. There it is. There it's ending. And then we'll move forward a little bit more right in here around 320 or so. 
and we'll key a little bit further there. So the end growth is up to 85 and the start growth is up to 72. And then we'll come into frame 500 and we'll key the start growth at around 96 or so and the end growth will be all the way up to 100 again so we get that nice tiny little piece at the end. Okay, so let's watch this through. Really, really interesting how this one's coming out much faster and then the others start to catch up. So we're just wanting to get that feel that there is lots of contrast in the types of motion even though they're all following along the same path. And you get that by varying those sweeps. Okay, so let's move on to sweep four. We'll just come in here at zero, frame zero, key both the start and end growth at zero. And this time let's come up here again to about frame 180 and we'll push this one forward to about 34 for the start growth and the end growth we'll just push um, ahead a little bit to about 12 and then let's come back in here just about halfway through again about 346 is where that ended up we'll push that start growth forward and I'm gonna stop it just kinda right in here so we've got a nice staggered look and then we'll bring that end growth forward to about uh, 58 looks like and then we'll come forward to 500 and we'll do about 96 on the start growth property and 100 again on the end growth so we get that nice little droplet there at the very end okay so this is starting to look really really nice let's turn off our sweep 5 just so we can see what we have by itself okay looking good so far we do uh, see that maybe that lighter blue one is getting a little far ahead of everybody else so let's kind of match that back up uh, with our last chance here on sweep 5 so again 0 0 on the start and end growth properties on frame 0 then we'll move forward to let's say right in here is where I'm really starting to notice it so that's frame 187 and what we'll do is push that start growth right in there so it's kind of just right in the middle and then the end growth will pull forward a little bit so just kind of is in the thick of all that and we'll control click to key that property and it looks like this one made it a little bit further than zero we will overwrite that okay and then coming in right about here looks like we could use some green in this area here so let's push that start growth forward a bit just kind of right in there and then we'll pull this one back to about halfway through that olive piece and then we'll key both of those and then move on to 500 and put this one again at 96 and end growth value at 100 so they kind of all end in the same place but those middle values are different so it really helps to make it feel very dynamic by having all those different values in the middle but they're all ending in the same area now later on we'll add more to this so this really feels like a lot of um, points are being hit here but for now we've got just this really beautiful looking kind of spin that these are making so now that those keyframes have been set and we varied them a little bit I want to set some camera keyframes so I really want to play off of some of the curves that are being created here so how do we set our camera maybe we want to look at it something like this where we can really see that as it spins around I think that's going to be really valuable so seeing that and then seeing this kind of move down here maybe like this maybe we want to see it more from this type of an angle and then maybe we switch down here and then we start to see these pieces as they come back through here so many different possibilities and um, will be so let's come up here and add a new camera and to look through this camera and to start changing its values we'll go ahead and click that camera object so now we're looking through our camera and every time I move around just like I normally would um, it's moving where the camera is looking if I click off of that camera object I can actually move around and see the camera and what it's looking at so you see there's that camera 
if I click that camera object again, I'll snap into position right where that green camera was looking from. Okay, so let's scrub forward a little bit and find our pieces. There they are. And it looks like we kind of move back here. This is where they're beginning from. Now one little quick thing, if you don't know this already, if you're trying to orbit around inside of Cinema 4D and you're just clicking over here, you're kind of just orbiting randomly. If you hover your mouse over a piece of geometry though, you'll orbit just around that piece. So see how that's staying in the same place and my camera's just moving around it like it's fixed on it? That's what I'm wanting to do. So, okay, let's go ahead and get this into position. So I kind of want to look at this a little bit from above and coming in from that lower left-hand side. So if I scrub through, you see it come in, and then we kind of see everything start to move around. So you can kind of take a little bit of leeway with the way that this looks. Um, but I found some values earlier that I really like the way that they look for this as a first position. So I'll go just go ahead and tell you those values. It's really close to where we have our camera right now, but it's just a little bit different. So I'm going to set that X value at 12,638. So see that just scooted it over a little bit. Our Y value is going to be at 7,541. So we're a little bit lower than we were before. And our Z value is going to be at 7,194. Okay? So now we're a little bit closer to it. Now we need to rotate around to be able to see this. So I'm going to come up here and my um, heading, I'm going to rotate to 113 degrees. We're really close on the pitch. I'm just going to change it to negative 22. And then we're going to leave that bank the same. So you can see it just kind of repositioned it. And I, I really like the way that this looks, how it kind of goes off screen this way. But we are going to continue to animate this. So what you want to do is go to frame zero. And with these values that I have found for us, let's go ahead and plug those in. So I'm going to hold down control and we'll key the position and we'll key all three values of the rotation even though we haven't changed our bank just in case we want to change it later on. Okay so we start to move through here and we scrub forward a little bit and we're really not moving so let's come in to about frame 219, 220 just right in there and we'll move this because this is when they kind of start to transition to that lower level of that spiral we've created with our splines. So we'll zoom in a little bit more closely here. Maybe kind of rotate it around a bit. And this is really up to you what you want it to look like. But once you get it there, you can just hit that keyframe button again right there, record active objects. However, it will record the scale for you if you just have those default values on. So I'll actually undo that. We'll hit Control Z. And I'm going to turn off that scale right there. So it's just going to be recording position and rotation. And parameter is turned on for recording. That's going to be if you have a user-defined parameter. But we don't have one for this, so you can leave it on. If we have one that comes up later, that's fine. So go ahead and click record again, and you see scale is not recorded. So now we've got that kind of moved back since we undid that. So I'll just kind of come back in here. We'll rotate back over to where we were at. Just right in there. And you can record over that keyframe. So now we've got our nice little movement here. Okay, so I like where this is, but I want to maybe edit it a little bit. So let's pull this value down a bit in our coordinates so that we're kind of moving over to the side. Maybe this is a little bit farther over to the left, you see. So we're kind of just changing our composition a little bit, which I think is going to help overall just to make this feel a little more polished than just having it right in the middle. So I'll control click just to overwrite that value. And then for this one, let's actually make this where we're kind of farther down here. And let's change our rotation a little bit. So instead of being rotated down this way, let's rotate up and then move this down. 
So we're kind of looking at it from below, you see. So we're, I'm just kind of rotating that back up right in there. And then we can move this down. So you can change your position and your rotation together to get some different results. And you can see how that's going to be just kind of down there in that lower left hand corner. We're sort of looking up at it. Okay, so let's control click both the pitch and that, uh, excuse me, the Y position and the pitch rotation. Okay, and then maybe we can play around with our Z value a little bit. So you could get a little bit closer in here maybe, so you're kind of right up underneath this. I like that. I think that's a lot more interesting of a composition. Let's go ahead and key that right in there around 9720. And we'll just go ahead and leave the heading as it was. So now we've got kind of this really interesting movement where we kind of come down, follow those pieces, and then rotate up and move down at the same time so we're focusing on those sweeps okay let's move forward a little bit more here so you see we kind of have stopped at that point let's move on just right around here about the frame 325 and we'll start changing it again so I'm gonna come in here and we'll kind of rotate around this so that we're sort of up underneath there and then we can, you know, get it into place and then you can start playing with the individual value. So kind of getting that into position. I want to leave a little bit of room over here on the right hand side because later we're going to have, we're going to need a place to put that head. Um, so right in there around 9, uh, 9835 for that X position. So I'll control click that to lock it in. Um, and then this one's also pretty close. We've just kind of rotated under there so you know that's that's pretty good right in there around negative 165 or so and then let's just pull back a little bit further away so we get a little bit more of that in view so we'll key that as well and rotate over to put some more of that into perspective for us and then Let's turn that pitch rotation down so we can see a little bit more kind of underneath there. So it feels like it's farther above us and then we've got some more room to play with over here. Okay, so now all of those have been keyed and you kind of see how that moves us down. And then we get this beautiful kind of right underneath look at that as it spins around. Whoosh right under there awesome okay let's add one more keyframe over here at 500 now we can't I know we can't see anything anymore but it's just gonna be kind of a small uh, little movement and in fact what we can do is kind of scrub backwards so we can kind of see what this looks like and then we'll move this keyframe over that that seems like a pretty good plan so let's uh, kind of pump this up so we're kind of going to be panning back a little bit so we get some more room to play with for the head once we start adding that in and it's also kind of pushing us over to the to the side because we're using that X value obviously we'll key that in there um, and then our Y value let's go really high let's kind of just come way up in here so we shot up there a little bit above that area okay and then our Z value I want to pull back a little bit farther away okay key that and then let's come in here and maybe change um, our angle just a little bit if you if you want to so maybe down just a little bit on the pitch just like that okay so we've keyed all of those I haven't changed the rotation at all but you can go ahead and key them if you f want to have those keyed just in case you accidentally change something maybe later on so that stays as it was so you see what's happening here is it's just kind of slowly moving back but it's not too slow right now because we did that a little bit early just so we still have those splines as a point of reference so we'll highlight that and move that forward to frame 500 so it's just kind of a slow pull backwards 
to get those extra pieces in there. And then later on, maybe we'll add in some more frames or something uh, so that we get a little bit more um, in the shot itself. Uh, or you could go ahead and do it now if you want it to kind of continue to pull backwards a little bit, maybe just a little bit more um, than what we have here. We can, you know, raise that up. Or you could just use your mouse to kind of move backwards like that. Uh, I'm just using the wheel there. Now, if you feel like you got too far, you can come in here and you've got really tight individual control of those values there. So just really come in there and slowly edit those. So that's in about 13.5. Um, and then maybe we want to go up a little bit higher. So maybe we're kind of rising above that. Um, and then maybe back a little bit over to the other side. So you can see we're using the X and the Z to control how we're moving backwards because we've rotated so much that now um, we're not really on that world axis um, anymore. So we're having to go, you know, in that direction. So maybe, maybe even go the other way, actually. I think this will be a little bit closer, honestly, to the head and probably make some more sense. So maybe just kind of moving over there. Okay, right in there is great. Let's go ahead and key those three. I'm not going to mess with the rotation because it's such a slight movement. So you see how it just moves from there to there, just kind of slowly moves over that way. So that's going to be great. We might end up moving that keyframe later on if we add a few more frames. But in the next lesson, I want to focus on fleshing out this sweep. So we've got you know, these main pieces, but I want to have some more. I want to have some more to play with here, some more little tiny pieces that are kind of moving along with it. And um, maybe even some more pieces that are continuing to come down through here, even after those main splines have swept through. So um, in the next lesson, we'll be coming in here and continuing to flesh that out. And we've made a really interesting animation here that follows along with our splines and then gives us some room here at the end as it kind of pulls over to the side to get our head um, into view. But some of the areas here in our sweep I think could actually look a little bit more robust because sort of this area here at the end, obviously we don't have a lot going on. And I think that those could last for maybe just a little bit longer and maybe have a few more kind of little small pieces that go in this area. So the way that I want to achieve this is by shift selecting all of the sweeps that we already have and then holding down control and just pulling down right below those so we get this second set of sweeps. So now it doesn't really look like anything is different because they're still right on top of each other and they have all the same keyframes. But what we can do is because we have all of those sweeps selected, we can highlight the keyframes that we already have set up for all five of those sweeps. And then let's just pull them forward a little bit. So what's happening is they're just going to happen a little bit later than the first set. So you see how this comes through. And really, it just looks like a continuation, which isn't really what I want. But you can see how they last for a little bit longer. Those other ones were leaving a little bit more quickly. So what I'd like to do is a couple of things here. We can go in and actually grab the splines of a few of these. And let's move out of our camera view for a moment. And I'll just rotate back around here. And we can just move the spline over slightly. See here, maybe move that one up a bit. And then let's go in just with this sweep selected that I'm working with here. And I'm just going to click over here to the side so that's not highlighted anymore. And you can see that at this point we're at 14 and 37. So I want to make this one a lot uh, skinnier. So let's zoom in here and I can see what this is. Just a lot shorter. You can see it's pretty long. So if I come in and I say I'm going to make that start growth a lot closer to the end growth value and then I rekey that and I'm on the same keyframe. See how now that is just kind of this small little piece. And it's almost right inside of that green one. So let's go ahead and grab the spline again and see if we can't get that just sort of on its own little path. 
So moving it down and over. There, perfect. Okay, so now I'm going to scrub forward a little bit further, and you'll see that it's gotten long again because we have this second keyframe. So all we have to do is increase that start growth to get a little bit closer to the value of the end growth, then we'll rekey it. And I don't even need to look at it, I just know that they're pretty close. And now we've got this nice small little piece. Okay, so there's a couple of ways that you could go about um, duplicating these to get all of these different pieces. So what I did was I just duplicated all five and I could go in and start changing every single one. Um, so maybe have the second one or you could just duplicate the one that we just changed and then maybe offset the keyframes a bit. So it's really up to you. This one looks like it's got a few different keyframes. So our first one obviously is zero zero and um, then we've got our two right here. So this one's very very long. I'm going to increase this pretty significantly to get that start growth up closer to the end growth. And then again here at the end I don't want it to be ever higher than the end growth property however. Okay so now we've got this nice little one and let's grab the sweep and we'll just push this out so it's on its own. And let's maybe change the color. So instead of having this green, I'll make sure I'm deselected down here. Got that green selected here. We'll delete it. And then let's maybe make this one that mint color. So we'll just drop that on. So it's a little bit different from its counterpart that's kind of just already sitting there. All right, let's move down to our next sweep. Um, you don't even have to delete the color off. You could just come in here and drop it right on top of the other color and it will just replace it. So that's kind of nice. So with that sweep 3.1 selected, let's come in here to our first keyframe. And this time, instead of bumping up the start growth to get closer to the end growth, we can decrease the end growth to become closer to the start growth. So that's just gonna push it back a little bit further, which will make it last seemingly a little bit longer which is nice so just getting that a little bit closer there and then control clicking to rekey that you can see how this is just becoming a little bit more fleshed out by having those pieces in place then we can just grab the spline maybe this time we want to move this one to the outside and over a bit maybe not quite that far there we go great and then let's move on to sweep 4.1. This one, let's also do the same thing, getting the end growth to be a little bit closer to the start growth by increasing its value. So we're at 31 there. And then we'll move forward and increase this one up to, let's say, 75. And let's actually switch these colors. So I'm going to pull that texture up there and pull that one down there. So just kind of flipping that. And then we'll grab our spline. Let's scrub backwards a little bit, just to kind of see where we're at. And it looks like we're already a little bit over to the side anyway, so that's pretty good there. You can move it over a little bit more if you wanted to. Okay, and then we've got sweep 4.1, which it looks like we actually have already moved over a bit, so let's come in here and we'll move the spline of this one maybe over to the left a little bit maybe even down some and then sweep 5.1 will come in here and again let's increase that end value I'm just getting it a little bit closer to the start growth and I'll leave that one the same color that's fine so let's go back and look through our camera again. I'm just kind of scrubbing forward. Looks like we have two of those pieces that are very, very similar. Um, so let's kind of fix that a bit. So our last one, it looks like we have this green color and that's not really working. So let's try our light blue color on this piece here because you can see those are overlapping. So we'll just select that and drop the light blue on there. And you can see they're overlapping each other in space as well. So we can just move this one down. And I'll just zoom back for a minute here. And we can move it over a bit as well. 
And then if I want to get back into place, because I didn't change any keyframes on my camera, I can just scrub and that will fix it. And then it looks like this navy one is having some issues too, so we'll grab its spline as well. And I'm just going to pull it straight up, just like that. Maybe a maybe ended up a little bit high to be honest, so we'll pull it back down slightly. Just have it on the inside part there. Great, so that's looking really good. These might be a little bit close. You can see there's a little bit of issue there with that penetrating, so we'll pull this spline over. I'm going to undo that because I had the sweep selected. Make sure you have the spline selected. We'll just pull both of those over to the side till that's in place, just both on that Z and X. Still having a little bit of an issue, so let's pull it up. Great, much better. Okay, so we're really getting a lot more movement now with all of these small pieces. So what I'd like to do is actually kind of repeat this process, but this time we'll put these at the beginning. So I'm going to shift select, pull down again by control dragging. And then this time we'll highlight all of their keyframes. And I'm going to go have these kind of out in front. So we've already got them, let's say right about there. So some of these actually start a little bit early. And this one, I, you know, I've got two navy ones here. Let's replace that with the mint green color. Okay, just like that. We're scrubbing forward here, and you can see that now we've got just a lot more random feel to this. And this one feels like it's kind of off in its own little world, this one right here. So let's take a look at the spline for that one. And let's take a look at the spline for this one. If you can't see the spline, you'll need to uncheck your sweep, and then you'll be able to see that spline. So this one's way, way lower than the other one. So let's take it and move it a little bit. So just zoom out where I can see those handles. I'll pull this one up, kind of just into the mix a little bit better here. And then we can check back on those sweeps and then scrub back through. Now that one doesn't feel like it's so far away. And it doesn't, feels like we really don't have very many of those dark green pieces. So let's add a few more. It looks like we actually only have one dark green. So let's maybe replace, um, let's do this blue one here, replace that one. And I'm just gonna come down here till I find the one I have selected. There it is. We'll replace that one with green. And I'm just looking at what we've got up here to see what would be nice to change. This one right here could be green. I think that would be a good change. So now you can see that this is getting a little bit more evened out. We had a, a little bit of a t bias towards that blue color. Okay, so that's looking better. We got a little bit of an issue here, so let's come in and fix that spline. Move it down, maybe over a little bit, see if that helps. Just kind of watching this through to make sure that we don't have any big problems. This one we will probably want to move up just so we don't get that issue. Just kind of a little bit of a guessing game to make sure everything's moving the way that it should. All right, pretty good. I think that it might be nice to have this navy piece back a little bit farther. So let's go in and take a look at the sweep values. One easy thing for us to do would be to just select those middle values here and pull them forward so we get it to be in the place that we want. So just kind of editing composition by changing those keyframes is a really quick and easy way to just kind of space that out a little bit better. So if and besides moving the spline, another thing that you can do is just go in and change the placement of a keyframe and that may help you to have less pieces overlapping. 
So you could go in and do this several different times. Maybe if you want to do it one more time, uh, maybe selecting those five there at the end, control dragging down, and this time maybe just coming in here and let's see where we are needing some more of those pieces. So it looks like kind of right in here we don't really have any. So with all of those selected, I'm just going to pull these back, which is backwards, to right in there. So we've got a few coming in pretty late in the game here. And we'll just kind of move those up a little bit and maybe over to the left a bit. Okay, they look like they're not having any kind of interpenetration yet. And then we'll just kind of pull this back and then let's see what that looks like for us. So we've got a few little nice kind of straggler pieces here. Now this one is a little too far back. So let's come in here and it looks like it's keyframe uh, is kind of hanging back here. It starts really, really late and all the rest of them are forwards. So what we can do is just add a little more time on here, say like 800 frames or so, and then we'll, we'll be able to see the rest. Not quite enough. Let's try 1200. Make sure you've got all four keys. And that ought to do the trick actually if we pull this back a little bit more. We know we're ending somewhere in there, so that's good just by pulling that back a little bit. And then we want to take this back down to 600 where we had that before. And now that one's not quite so late. See, it's following along with the rest. So just adding the rest of those in there is a really helpful way to just make the whole thing feel like there's more going on. And you can do it really quickly and easily by duplicating, changing up a few keyframes, changing up a few colors, and then you've got um, a much more robust looking sweep. Now in the next lesson, we're going to move on to kind of finishing out this area here where our focal point's going to be. So stick around, and we'll be playing around with that head